Well, we just got through praying over the kids, and now are y'all ready for some church? Well, we want to welcome everyone that's joined us by live stream this morning. I mean, you know, we got a family outside the, outside these four walls. Amen. And we always want to welcome y'all every Sunday to join us and get into God's Word. Amen. Amen. Well, how many of y'all ready to talk about authority? How many of y'all tired of talking about authority? Uh, just, a t- just the words. Amen. Well, just to let you know, we are going to finish up uh, this teaching this morning. We've been on this series for probably, well, I really don't know how long we've been on it. So weeks could have been months. I, don't, I have no idea. But uh, on the believer's authority, you know, and I want to say it's been such a blessing because a lot of y'all miss Wednesday nights, but on Wednesday nights, we have testimonies of how the believer's authority and the word of God is changing people's lives. So I, I encourage all of you to come on out on Wednesday night because it's, it's one thing to talk about old Bible heroes and get over in the Old Testament and talk about old Bible heroes. I want to make Bible heroes of the 21st century. Yeah. You are the new Bible heroes. So it encourages me more and it encourages your brothers and sisters more if y'all come out and we on Wednesday nights. We may not give testimonies every Wednesday night. If you have one, I'll let you give it. Amen. But we get a deeper dive into the word as well. But I want to thank all those who have been giving their testimonies. You have authority. Uh, but listen, if you do not use your authority, then the devil will continue to work in your life until you do. And that's on an individual basis. Uh, a lot of times people think, well, my husband's got me covered. No, he don't. He's got you covered when you're in his presence. But when you get outside his presence, the devil can have his way in your life if you don't use your own authority. Amen. So you have to put a stop to the devil's activities. Uh, Jesus has already defeated Satan. How many of you know that? He's under Jesus' feet. I had to put him under mine. You got to put him under yours. And then every time, uh, you come, every, every day you got to remind yourself, not me, not your, not your pastor, not anybody else, you got to remind yourself that he's still under your feet and keep him there. Amen? That's why Jesus gave us authority. So you and I can dominate the devil instead of him dominating us. Uh, so I'm hopeful, hopeful that as we move on through the uh, past this series, and we're going to get into something new when we come back off of vacation, uh, that you'll continue listening to these messages. How I many you know you don't get everything the first time you hear it? You got to hear it over and over and over again. Amen. Because walking in your authority is vitally important to you living a victorious life right now. You know we shouldn't have to wait till we get to heaven. To say, woo, finally I got the victory. You can have the victory here. Amen? Yes, amen? So we've established the facts that you do have authority. We've established the fact that we must exercise our authority. Uh, and we've also ex- uh, established the fact that you and I, you and me, are the only ones that can hinder our authority. Did y'all get that? The devil can't hinder your authority unless you give him permission. Right. Amen. See, you, we, we hinder our authority by not, uh, by not number one, we learned this, not by not submitting, submitting excuse me, our whole life. Not just the parts we want to give him, but our whole life to God and his word. We hinder our own authority by not believing or having faith in the scriptures. We, we hinder or we can stop our authority by, uh, by not doing what it takes to grow up spiritually. We talked about that last week. See, growing up spiritually is one of the major keys to you effectively using your authority. Can I get an amen? amen. So last week I narrowed down three things that every person must do to grow up and become mature Christians. I only gave you two of them last week. Do you remember, anybody remember what they were? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> what was one of them? Spend time with God, time with God every day. Every day, 24-7. Amen? 24-7. Everybody say 24-7. 24/7. 24/7. 
every day, 24-7, 365 days a year, whether you're working or at home, spend your first moments of every day with God and in his word. Amen. Number two, when you spend time in God's word, then you must be quiet and listen. God's not going to talk over you, but he will lead and guide you all through your day if you'll just take some time and just quiet down and listen to his voice. The Holy Ghost that uh, everybody has in their spirit being, uh, the Holy Spirit, he is a gentleman. He will never try to over talk you. I know that's a bigger problem with the females than it is the men. Well, he's a man. It's a, it, the Holy Spirit's a he, right? Amen. So he's going to be a gentleman, just like most of you husbands are a gentleman, right? You never try to overtalk your wife? Uh, yeah, I just saw the looks on y'all's face, y'all. <laughs> y'all not going to go there. Amen. The third thing and what we're going to talk about today uh, the third thing to grow up spiritually, and you really got to put some big boy britches on, big girl britches on for this, is you must cast down wrong thoughts. You have to get control of your mind. Thus, my title for this message is Casting Down Wrong Thoughts. I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep on saying it until it's the absolute truth. Uh, it's... Uh, it's absolutely the truth in your spirit being, okay? That you have authority and you must use your authority. Amen? Amen. The only way the devil can access your life is, is, is through your mind. That's the only way he's got in. Amen. He can't put anything. Listen, all the diseases are in the earth, Okay? Now, the devil, we know, is the author of all disease. But the devil don't come and pick somebody out and say, I'm going to put cancer on that one. Okay? Here's what the devil does. Now, he didn't do it to me because I, uh, I quit. But I, I smoked for 32 years. Now, there's a warning on the side of every pack of cigarettes that says, these things will give you cancer. So if I disobey that and I just choose to put things in my body that I know shouldn't be there, then it gives an open door for that C word to come in. Are you hearing me? That's just like diabetes. Most diabetics are overweight because they eat the wrong things. Don't shout me down now just because I'm coming up on somebody's porch. Amen. So the devil don't come and put certain things on people. He's the author of them, but he does not put those things on people. We do it to ourselves because we eat wrong, we live wrong, and then we want somebody to blame. Why well, am I? I got a lot of lead balloons going off in here today. I told you, these are those thoughts, though, guys, that we need to cast down. You know, I mean, we want to blame everybody but ourselves. Woo, hallelujah. Aren't y'all glad this message is going to be over with today? <laughs> Take y'all eight to ten days of me being gone just to <laughs> just chew on it and, and digest it. Amen. But the word is progressive, guys. So toward the end, we're going to get stronger messages to where we have to be accountable to God Almighty. Amen. So all right, let's launch out here. In Ephesians chapter number six, did I tell y'all that in the beginning or did I just get right into it? I just got right into it, didn't I? Yes. Ephesians chapter six, I'll give you time to get there. Say amen when you're there. Ephesians chapter six, verse number 10 says, finally, everybody say finally. Finally, finally, my brethren. So who's he talking to? Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, underline that word, of the devil. Verse number 12, for we do not wrestle. Now here it is, guys. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, take it, keep in mind that this was written over 2,000 years ago, okay? But it's still prevalent today. How many of you know the devil has not changed ever since the Garden of Eden? Amen. He's been the same all the way through. And because of Adam and Eve's disobedience to God is what put the curse on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. And the devil, he's just doing whatever we allow him to. And I'm going to show you that. I've already showed you it. We have authority over him. Amen. But I want you to notice in verse 10 that Paul tells the church, not sinners, but the church, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power here is the same word in the Greek as we found over in, in, in uh, the Hebrew word that in, the, in Genesis that means dominion. Power means dominion or authority. So he's saying here, be strong in the Lord and in the power or the authority that he has given you. Luke ten nineteen. we learned that, right? You didn't learn it, write it down, look at it. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power and authority. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then he says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we know from previous teachings that the wiles in the Greek is pronounced, that is the Greek word is methodia, which means the method. It also means a path or a road always taken. It's the same path. So in using the word wiles here, Paul is telling us that when the enemy comes, he comes down the same road and he's going to use the same method every time. And it's important that you get a hold of that. Amen? You have to get a hold of that, so write it down. The devil is going to use the same path, the same method every time he comes. Amen. When he comes to strike your life, he's always going to come down the same road and use the same method every time. And you, hey, you ought to be happy about that. Because if you know how he's coming, you know how to defend against him, don't you? Amen. You recognize what the road is. If he's only coming, listen. It's easier if you're setting up defenses to guard your life. It's easier to guard a one-way street than it is to guard an expressway, right? So we ought to just give God some praise that he, we know how he's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says he only comes one way. Look at verse 12 again. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, so your wife and your brother and your sister and your, uh, your, your husband is not your enemy. Amen. Amen. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies. Amen. So now Paul is tell, tells us the way Satan is going to come against us, that we don't wrestle against a war against uh, the things in the natural realm, we war against things in the spirit realm. They manifest themselves in the natural, but the war is in the spirit. And you need to understand that because you cannot beat the devil up physically. And your flesh ain't strong enough physically to overcome what he tries to put on you. Amen. Or what he makes available to you and then we're going to find out because we start thinking those wrong thoughts, we actually invite stuff into our lives. I'm, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. What I want you to see that it is a spiritual battle. Amen. And it's the same for you, me, and every other Christian. We need to get a hold of that. It's a spiritual battle. Amen. Guess where the spiritual battleground is? Everybody do this. Up here. That's the spiritual battleground right there. Your mind. That's Satan's only road to dominate in your life. 
It's only, it's his only road if, he, if I let him dominate my life. It's because I let him into my mind. Any other person's life, same thing. That's how he controls us. If they can control what we think, he can control how we live. Amen. We need to be aware of that. All right, let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I didn't do this this morning. I apologize. Does our guest, y'all have Bibles? Amen. Good. I like everybody to read it for themselves. Mark it down in your Bible. Amen. I even learned that you can do that on your phone. I had no idea. Amen. You learn something new every day. I learned here a while back that they make more than flip phones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to see this in verse number 11. This is why we need to know how the road that Satan's coming down. Verse 11 says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Of course, that word less, we don't use that kind of talking. Nobody, nobody goes around saying less this and less that. But that word less means to keep. So we keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not what? Ignorant of his devices. In other words, we know in advance how he's going to attack, what method he's always going to use. Therefore, it's easy to guard against his attacks. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Just setting the groundwork, guys. So putting these two scriptures together, Ephesians chapter 6 and Ephesians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul is telling us to listen. When the enemy comes to strike our lives, when he tries to influence your life, one way or the other. When Satan comes against you on all sides and tries to completely destroy your life, he's going to come one way and one way only, and that is going to be through your thoughts and your imaginations. So, we, threw, now, we know now through these two scriptures that the spiritual attacks of our enemy are to influence us into thinking what he wants us to think. Amen. And let me just add this. When he comes and talks to you, he's going to sound just like you. He's going to sound just like you. He's not going to come, hey, listen to me. You know, quit watching that. Quit watching TV. You don't talk like that. He talks just like you do. That's the only way he can get you to listen. If, you, if it was obvious that there was a devil's voice, he'd be going, I know who you are. But when he sounds as sweet and everything as you see, see, he's the deceiver. He deceived Adam and Eve in the garden because he sounded just like them. He said what they wanted to hear. All right. See, if he can deceive us through our thinking, thinking wrong thoughts, See, he can get us to move in the wrong direction in life. And we know this is true because of Proverbs 23, 7. Just look at the monitor. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man, or as he thinks in his heart, so is he. This is the same for true for a woman. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. No one, listen to me, no one has ever sinned without first having the thought of sinning. Amen. That's the truth. Nobody, absolutely nobody falls into sin. You come and tell pastor, oh, well, pastor, I fell into sin. No, you didn't. You fell into your mind and in your mind talked you into it. And that's the truth of the Word of God. Now, do we fall to sin? Yes. The Bible says so. But we don't make an excuse, well, the devil made me do it. Amen. See, well, you have to act on the sinful thoughts. Matter of fact, there's a scripture, I don't know the address, but it says that it first comes as a thought, and then when the thought gets into the heart and the heart starts believing it and th that it's okay to do that, then we'll just uh, fulfill the sin. 
I know that's been true in my life many a times. Amen. That's right. I've sinned. Sorry. You know, I'm forgiven. Amen. See, I don't know about you, but I'm, I choose now today to not act on sinful thinking. See, you got to quit acting on the sinful thinking. You got to say no. Everybody say no. That was pretty weak. Everybody say no. See, you need to learn how to say no. When them thoughts come about, okay, I, I've got this or I've got that or, you know, this is happening to me or the, whatever the thoughts may be, I'm not going to put any voice to it. But you got to learn to say no. If it don't line up with God's word, say no. Amen. Because God is the only God. He's the only God of truth. Amen. Amen. That's what you call having a sound mind. <laughs> Amen. Second Timothy 1.7. Just write it down. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Excuse me. <coughs> Got these backwards. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for water. Hallelujah. He hadn't given me a spirit of fear. I got a sound mind. Everybody say, I got a sound mind. <clears throat> but I want everybody that's watching my live stream this morning, everybody in this building, that, to know that God has given or made available to every born-again Christian the ability to have a sound mind. Amen? Amen? A sound mind is, number one, a renewed mind. You must renew your mind to the Word of God. Number two, a, a sound mind is a mind that always thinks godly thoughts. And number three, a sound mind is a mind that thinks and acts God's way. Amen. It doesn't think about, uh, a sound mind does not think about the way of the culture. It does not think how culture thinks. It don't think, a sound mind does not think the way of the government or the way the government is trying to get us to think. A sound mind doesn't think pro progressively that we need to embrace all the different ideologies of this present world. No, my brothers and sisters, to the contrary. A sound mind, according to the Bible, is a mind that only thinks in line with God's word. That's what a sound mind is. My brothers and sisters, God has made a sound mind available to all of us and all of our other children no matter what denomination they go to, no matter what church they go to. So it is possible for you and I to have a sound mind even in a very unsound world. Amen. But I also want to warn you that the devil will do everything he can and use any outlet available to him, him <clears throat> to get you to think like the world thinks. And accept what the world accepts. How many of you know that to be true? Yeah. Amen. For example, I read a Christian survey recently where 1.7 million members of a certain denomination have now accepted abortion as being okay. Another uh, Christian survey said that 54% of certain denominations in the U.S. of A., say that homosexuality is an accepted lifestyle. And to go one step further, that same survey said that over 50% of all Christian faiths, all of them, all Christians' faith, faiths, accept that sex outside of marriage is okay with God. Contrary to the Bible. And please don't take what I'm saying the wrong way. I'm not criticizing or judging folks that, who accept these life choices. I myself never agreed with the first two. But I'm just being honest with you with that I was raised in a generation that sex outside of marriage was okay. Everybody was doing it. Parents were doing it. I'm not judging my parents. Parents did it, friends did it, everybody did it. And it wasn't until I got into the Word of God 
And I started reading and I started studying. I saw the scriptures that says that is a form of fornication and no fornicators will ever inherit the kingdom of God if you're practicing that. Amen. Galatians chapter number five, starting with verse 19 through 21. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. It could be 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. I'm not really sure. If you want to ask me after service, we can look it up. Amen? Thing of it is, and when I started, here's my point. When I started reading the Bible for myself and not taking the word of the man that was standing in the pulpit, I started reading things for myself. I started changing the way I lived. Because I had promised God on, uh, night, on Easter morning, 1997, at a roadside park here in Wembley, Texas, on top of the hill, I promised the Lord Jesus Christ when I cried out to him and I hadn't been living for him. And I said, if you'll just show me in your word the truth, then I'll do it. I'll do the best I can to do your word. Yeah. Amen. And I've been doing it ever since. And I'm still growing. As I'm going to be honest with you, I have not arrived. Amen. I don't have sex outside of marriage. Don't take that wrong. <laughs> I just heard somebody say, really? <laughs> I'm a work in progress just like you are. But when we read these things in the Bible for ourselves, we, we need to step up. It's part of growing up spiritually, guys. Amen? I'm going to have to go back to page one. Somebody don't say, hey, me, I'm really loud. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot of the things we were taught when we were growing up are wrong. In other words, any thoughts or imaginations or lifestyles that are contrary to the word of God, God will never accept as okay. Never. Because if he did, if, because if he did then that would make him and his word a lie. And the day that him and his word becomes a lie, the earth will be destroyed because the devil would have won. And that's what the devil tries to do every, to every born-again Christian. He knows he can't destroy. See, the devil knows the end of the book. He knows he's going to be put away for a thousand years. So here's his deal. I want to take as many to hell with me as I can. Don't shout me down now just because I'm preaching up on your porch. Hmm. Hallelujah. That's actually not me. That's the Holy Ghost. Praise God. That's how the devil works, though. You need to understand that. Every Christian needs to understand how the devil works. He's constantly putting wrong thinking in front of our eyes on the TV, on commercial TVs, on everything, on the Facebook, on every other book there is out there. He puts wrong thinking in front of our eyes. He's constantly putting wrong thinking in our ears. Country and Western music. I was raised on it. Where you cheat on every wife. Amen. And everything looks better through rose-colored glasses. If you don't like what you have, just drink yourself into a stupor. And then get all your friends to go with you. All my friends in low places. If you just ever listen to those songs, you quit listening to them. Who wants to go to the low places? I want to go to the upper places. All my friends are up there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if, if you see wrong and you hear wrong, chances are you'll think wrong. And if you think wrong, according to Proverbs, we just read it, you'll live wrong. You think long, wrong long enough, you'll start living wrong. And you'll think God don't know it. Because you don't know that he's, you also put it in your back pocket where God's in his heart. You'll put him behind you where you think he don't see you, but he does. <laughs> Just because your pastor can't see you, don't mean God can't. He's with you all the time. And he's constantly pulling on your heartstrings to change. Amen. Everything you see happening in this world today 
whether it be ungodly thinking of society, whether it be the perverted lifestyles because of ungodly thinking, whether it even be the blasphemous teachings and behaviors of the corrupted church, everything we're witnessing right now is the enemy preparing the way for a God named the Antichrist. That's right. And I'll tell you the truth. Satan is getting humanity ready for the Antichrist introduction right now. And, and in order for him to do that, he's got to get them away from the truths of God's word. And he, listen, can I just, let's just be real. He's got the world. See, he's not after the world. He's after you. Amen. Young people, y'all need to know he's after you. We're fixing to send this young lady off to college. You're going to be out there on your own, baby, but we're going to be praying for you. Amen. He's after the next generation. He's after the ones we just sent back there. It's up to us to train them up in the way they should go. Amen. He's got to get them away from God's word. He's got to get them away from godly thinking. He's got to get them deceived where they believe the lie. He's got to get them to accept this new norm, this new normal way of thinking and living just because everybody else is. I mean, the three Hebrew children, you know, every, all the other Christians in that day were serving Nebuchadnezzar. They were bowing down to the idol that Nebuchadnezzar had made for himself. Three, three young men, teenagers, said, we don't care. Throw us in the fire. We're not going to bow down to your God. We need Christians right now today to stand up and say, I'm not going to bow. I don't care what you do to me. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to give in just because everyone else around me is. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Susan. I got one right. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to get y'all to just say amen. I'm trying to get your minds to thinking to where you know that, hey, even those little bit things that you think ain't important in your life, those little bit sins that you keep doing, they're important to God. And if you'll read the first three books, uh, uh, chapters of Revelation, you'll find that God started talking to the church. Well, I'm telling you, he started talking to this church at least a year ago, maybe a little longer. And he also showed me in the spirit that he's going he's gonna to accelerate the growth of this church spiritually. Uh, accelerated, uh, divine acceleration. Amen. That we're going to grow up in the word. Amen. Listen to me. I refuse to accept things just because the masses do. You know why? Because I made a choice a long time ago, 1997, to do my best, to always think like God thinks and always do what he asked me to. Have I been perfect in it? No. But when I fall short, I ask him to forgive me and I move on. I don't look behind. See, that's the wrong thought too. Don't look behind you. Amen. And any of you can do the same thing. But it begins with a choice. Everybody say choice. The choice is you have to line up your thinking with God's word. And no matter what the culture is doing, no matter what other churches are doing, no matter what those in your social circles are doing, that you're going to stand firm against wrong thinking and wrong behavior. Can you say amen? amen? See, if the enemy can get in your mind, this is very important. If the enemy can get in your mind, he can get into your life. But here's the thing. You have to give in for the enemy to get in. You have to give in or he can't get in. You have to open the door. But all you, yeah, he only needs a crack in your armor. And then he's going to slip in there. I've had it happen to me too many times, guys. And I know most of y'all have too. Amen? 
We're not going to, we've got to put a stop to it, praise God. But you have to give in for him to get in. You have to give in to wrong thoughts. You have to give in to wrong imaginations. So really, your thought life, everybody say, my thought life is in my control. Your thought life is in your control. Not the devil's, not your neighbor's, not your husband, not your wife's, not your sister's, not your brother's. It's in your control. I have control over my, my thought life. She can't make me think things. Amen. I mean, <laughs> we all got to move forward. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was, used to be either. Amen. How many of y'all can say the same thing? So I'm not where I used to want to be, <laughs> but I'm not where I used to be. Amen. Amen. Got to keep moving forward with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. In other words, I do now. Now, right today, I know the devil's devices. Today, you're no longer ignorant to the devil's devices. You know how he's coming. So it's up to you to whether you want to stay on the freeway or you want to get on the one-way street. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. See, when Satan tries to put thoughts in my imagination or my thoughts in my head, I just refuse to entertain them. I'm not going to entertain them. You cannot entertain them. I do what God's word tells me to do. Look at this in verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against, uh, according to the flesh. Same thing we just read in another chapter. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Look at this. For pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments. The KJV uh, version, the King James version says imaginations right there. Casting down arguments or imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Look at this. Bringing how many thoughts? Every, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, we all know Christ is what? Everybody say he's the living word. Everybody say he's the living word. Thank you. Uh, he's the li you, I want you to hear you say it. Because if you'll say he's the living word, then every time you read the word Jesus or Christ, you'll know, oh, wait a minute, that's my Bible. So we can read it like this, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God's word, couldn't we? Wow, isn't that amazing? This thing is so simple, guys. I'm telling you. Even a caveman can do it. How many of you remember that stupid commercial? <laughs> but notice what he says in verse number five. He says, casting down arguments and imaginations. The word imaginations in the Greek, listen to this, means reasonings. Your reasoning factors. So Paul is now talking about thoughts. When thoughts come, uh, not necessarily bad thoughts or sinful thoughts, but just everyday thoughts. But thoughts that come and try get you to try to, uh, to reason them out to where they sound right to you. I've had people come to me after uh, declaring to me boldly, I'm with you forever, Pastor. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Six months later, I get on their front porch preaching. They come to me and they say, well, you know, that was, we was only here for a season. Now God wants us to move. Well, how many of you know God don't change his calling? If you're called to a church, you until you fulfill everything that he has for you at that church, you come to me and say, well, we've been called somewhere else. is a lie. And I ain't going to call it anything else. Amen. And you come to me and say, you know something? I really don't agree with you, what you said. It kind of offended me, and then I can understand that. And then if we can't work it out and talk it out, and you still want to leave, then I'm going to hug you, say I love you. Bye-bye. Amen. We're going to leave on friends. There's friends. But don't come to me and say, you know, God changes his mind, because he don't change his mind. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
When, when you come to me and you say something, you better make sure it lines up with his word. Or I'm going to come right back at you. I'm not being mean, not being ugly, but that's just the way it is. I believe the Bible. I live by the Bible to the best of my ability. And I expect everyone in this room, everyone watching my live stream to do the same thing. Amen. That's all right. I've just, I got all my, let me step down off my pedestal, my preaching pedestal. I don't preach very much, but when I do, I do. Hallelujah. I believe all of us have used our reasoning at one time or another to talk ourselves into doing something that we know in our heart is not right. That's my point. That's against God's word. You see, that's part of our growing up spiritually is to do what Paul is telling us right here with that when those thoughts come that do not line up with God's word that we cast those thoughts down immediately. Everybody say immediately. Listen to me. <clears throat> there are only two types of thoughts available to all of mankind. Those thoughts of good and right in God's eyes and those thoughts of, that are evil and wrong in God's eyes. Didn't they eat off the fruit that was what? Good and evil. So God set the precedent back in the garden. There's only two types of thoughts. There's either thoughts that's going to line up with God's word or thoughts that are not going to line up with God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, the devil can't make us think a certain way. Every person chooses the thoughts that they're going to think. I choose how I'm going to think. No matter whether you hurt my feelings or, you know, or, you, know you may say something that might offend me, I choose whether I'm going to let that bother me or not. Amen. Husbands and wives, I'm talking to you. Wife says something, ruffles your feathers, you got to choose what you're going to think. Amen. Husbands say something that ruffles your feathers. Ladies, you got to choose. Don't be like Grandma Eve and just start spurting out stuff. <laughs> Amen. Think before you say something. That's what I'm trying to get us to do. We need, all do need to be aware that we need to think before we talk. Don't shout me down now. I'm on everybody's porch this morning. Because there ain't nobody sitting in here that walked across the Blanco River. You all drove. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, you walked on the rocks. You and I have control of what thoughts we're going to allow into our head and what thoughts we're going to cast out. And listen to me, casting out thoughts isn't just saying, I cast those thoughts down. I've done that before. I'm just coming against those thoughts in Jesus' name. No. Here's what you got to do, guys. We cast out our thoughts by replacing those thoughts with what? With the word of God. Let God's word do the casting down. Because when God's word casts it down, it's down. You can say, I'm casting you down. I rebuke you, devil. In Jesus' name, well, he ain't listening to you. But I guarantee you, you speak God's word, and he's got to obey it. Amen. We cast thoughts down by replacing those thoughts with God's word. For example, the devil comes and offers you a thought that you're never going to succeed in life or in a certain area of your life, or you can't do something. Do you just cast it down and say, I just cast that down? Or no, what do you do? You put Philippians 4.13 on it that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. How about if he comes and offers you the thought of poverty? Saying, you know something, John, you were born poor, you'll always be poor. You're not going to be able to pay your bills on time. Everything's going to be late. They're going to repossess all your property. They're going to take your car, your house, your kids, everything. I'm going to stand up and I'll say, you know, devil, you know what? 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17 says, I am now a new creation in Christ. 
all those old things and all those old ways of being and all those old ways of living, even though, yes, I was born poor. Amen. We were, we were, we were some of those poor kids on the block. But I didn't have to stay that way. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, I'm a new creation in Christ. Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So devil, get thee behind me. I put the word on it. Yeah. Amen. How about if he comes to put sickness and disease? You may not know the whole scriptures. If you come on Wednesday nights, you better know them. <laughs> you may not know the address of the whole scripture, but you know enough to say, by his stripes I am healed. Yeah. I thank you, Father God, that I walk in divine health. Yeah. Amen. That's how we cast down wrong thoughts. We put the word of God on it. How about some of those everyday thoughts that seem to just pop up out of nowhere but can have such an impact on your life if you allow them to. You know, the thoughts like, my life is what it is because I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, I'm too short, I'm too tall. I'd have more, but I'm too white, I'm too brown, or I'm too black. My life is the way it is because I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Or my life is the way it is because there wasn't no tracks in my neighborhood. My life is where it is because of this or that. You, you fill in the blanks. I don't know your life. See, that old thinking has to go. I said that old way of thinking has to go. How about those justification thoughts? Here's where I'm really going to come up on y'all's porch. When things don't go your way or somebody in your life says the wrong thing or sends you a text that has no feelings to it, just words, and you take those words the wrong way. That's why I tell people, call each other on the phone. Because when you talk to people and they hear your voice, they can hear your attitude. They can hear the love that you have coming to it or hear the other. But texts are just words on paper. And you leave it up to me to interpret them. And a lot of y'all, when y'all do this talking text, y'all don't go back and read. <laughs> before you just send it off. What? What are they saying? Yeah. Don't shout me down now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. All thoughts have to be cast down. Amen. Well, I just acted that way because he said something wrong. I'm talking about you. I'm helping you ladies out. My husband wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have acted that way. I said something back because he said something to me first. Now, yeah, now y'all all know what I'm telling and talking the truth now, right? Amen. I got two, two men to raise their hands. They, they're way back in the back back there. Hallelujah. They may have just been praising the Lord. You never just know. Or I said something ugly because they did. I mean, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. My point is, any thoughts that may cause us to act or say things that are contrary to God's word must be cast down. Amen. That's why it's so important that the born again believer get their mind renewed to the word of God. We have to change our mindsets, guys. We have to change our mindset to think like God thinks. I can tell you this, you change the way you think, you'll change the way you behave and you'll change the things you say. Amen. You got time for one more scripture? Turn over to Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 4. How many of you are interested in how Jesus dealt with wrong thoughts? Matthew chapter 4, or verse 1. This is a familiar story, but there's some more stuff I want to add. I want to just show you today. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. 
Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, well, Jesus knew he was, right? But he says, if you are the son of God, then command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, underline that. Here it is right here, guys. He answered and said, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, <clears throat> excuse me, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when the devil came at him with wrong thoughts, Jesus answered and said, right? Amen. Notice this. Jesus' response to the wrong thoughts was immediate. He didn't delay. He didn't get off his telephone from reading the text and start pondering on the words that he couldn't understand because you talked in text but didn't reread it. He didn't ponder on them thoughts. He didn't say, well, I wonder why pastor texted that to me. I said me because I don't want to offend anybody. Amen. I don't. I very seldom ever text. I text you if you text me, but I don't like it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I like talking to you. I want you to call me. I know I've said that before. But Jesus' response was immediately. He didn't ponder on the pro, the words that he read. He didn't ponder on what he what did they what did they really mean by that. How many of you know you can read things into what I say? A lot of times, if, and, and here's another thing, guys, the Lord just bringing this to my attention, and probably Miss Brennan and I are the only ones that ever lived this. <clears throat> but when you get offended and they don't come to you and ask for forgiveness, then everything you hear from that on is going to be with an offended ear. Because they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, ask for forgiveness, something they did two years ago. Yeah, don't shout me down now. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. When you should have casted those thoughts down, then all the thoughts in between that would have been okay. Each time, we have to immediately respond with the Word of God. Not preaching to the person that sends it to you, but you casting them down. You say, no, I know that, that ain't what they meant. That's my brother or sister in the Lord. I know that's not what they meant. Even though they said it, that's not what they meant because they love me. I mean, you know, your brothers and sisters in the Lord love you. Two or three of us. Okay, cool. All right. Let's move on. Hallelujah. All right. He answered and said, I'm not going to live by what you say. I'm going to live by the word of God. Amen. It don't say that, but I just added that. Hallelujah. See, part of our growing up spiritually, everybody said it's a process is knowing this principle right here, that when the enemy comes with thoughts, our response must be immediate. Because if we don't respond with God's word immediately and we allow the devil's thoughts to linger, they will affect our attitudes, what we say, and how we act. And that's just the truth of the matter. Divorce courts are full of people that said something in retaliation or said something wrong and didn't, didn't cast the thoughts down. And that's what the devil wants. He wants to separate not only couples, he wants to separate the church. He wants to separate the family. Amen. So our part is to cast down wrong thoughts. Amen. See, if we don't respond to the word immediately and we allow his word to, <clears throat> to linger, it's going to cause more problems. Amen. Jesus responded immediately, and his response was always the Word of God. That is a very important principle. It's respond and respond with God's Word. Look at verse 5. <clears throat> then the devil took him up to, into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. <clears throat> so now we see the devil trying to deceive Jesus by quoting scriptures to him. 
Actually, he's actually misquoting Psalms 91, 11, and 12, and I'll let you read that for yourself and figure out the words he either put in there extra or he left out. But my point is, wrong thoughts can come through misquoted scriptures, listen to me, or through ministers and teachers who only teach partial truths because you don't verify everything with your Bible. That's why I'm constantly telling people, bring your Bible. Make sure that we're saying the same thing. There's there's a lot of Bibles out there, too, that have scriptures missing. Amen. Brother Kyle showed me one of the Bibles we had in the church that were here before we even took the church over. He showed me, he said, Pastor, here's a whole scripture that's missing. So you know what we did with the Bibles? Threw them away. We're not going to give out Bibles that have scriptures missing. But if you don't ever read your Bible, you may not know it's missing. Don't shout me down now. Wrong thoughts can come through the pulpit. Verse number seven. Jesus again said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Can you see a pattern here? When the thoughts come, There has to be an immediate response without delay. And listen, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, teach your children this. Teach your children that they need to respond with God's Word. Let them see it in you because you're the best teacher. See, the enemy comes along with wrong thoughts and they try to re-identify your little child's gender. You teach them. They were fearfully and wonderfully made. You teach them that God created them perfectly. You teach them that God does not make mistakes. You teach them to immediately think what God says about them. Are you with me? All right, let's finish this thing up. Look at verse 8. I'm not near finished, but we're, we're, we're getting there. Amen. Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, listen to this, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Notice again, Jesus' immediate response to those wrong thoughts was to put God's word on it. He immediately says, it is written. How many of you know he didn't carry a KJV around with him? Amen. That's why I keep telling people to put the word in your heart. That's why we work diligently on Wednesday nights to get that word down in your heart. Amen. That you gotta be able to put God's word on it. Look at verse 11. Then the devil left him, praise God. And behold, the angels came and ministered to him. When you put the word of God on wrong thoughts, the angels will immediately come and minister to you that you went down the right road. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, when wrong thoughts come, if you will immediately respond to God's word, the devil will leave you. Now, this is was going to be my last scripture, but it really isn't because The Holy Ghost gave me a bunch of more stuff this morning to add. I got another page. But let's turn over to Philippians chapter 4. I'm not going to wait for you to get there. Just look at the board because I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Save some time. Amen? Amen. Philippians chapter 4 says, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every, look at this, every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request, With thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Verse 7, and God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot and whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and over your minds in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. For the rest, brethren, look at this. Here it is right here. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, whatever is honorable and seemly, 
whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think and weigh and take account of these things. Look at this. Fix your minds on them. Verse 9, practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being, praise God, will be with you. Now that's a promise, isn't it? If we'll think on the right things, we'll be in line with God's word and God's angels will come and minister with us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> So Paul is simply saying this, hallelujah, that in every situation, in every circumstance of life, when the enemy comes with wrong thoughts and he's trying to move your life into a certain direction, that's when you immediately respond by thinking on things that you have heard and learned from God's word. My brothers and sisters, any, any Christian can live a victorious life in every area of their life when they learn to cast down wrong thoughts. Now here's the last page that the Holy Spirit gave me this morning. So you can blame the overtime on him. Here's what he said. He said, the gospel message is not hard. Matter of fact, being a consistent doer of the God's word is really very, very easy once you set your mind to do it. And see, he said, therein lies another key to growing up spiritually. you got to get your mind right. And I'm not saying everything you think is wrong. Just cast down the thoughts that don't line up with his word. That's simple, isn't it? If it wasn't so simple, then why would Jesus, the Son of God, who is the word of God, why would he tell the entire world Oh, well, he's telling the ones that actually read their Bible. But he tells the entire world in John 3, 3, he says, and this is what he said, just write these down. He's, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless, you are, every, unless one is born again, look at this, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mark 10, 15 and Luke 16, 18, 18, 18, 17 say the same thing. Two gospels said almost the same thing. He said, assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things, old ways of thinking, old ways of acting, everything Everything that's old have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the last one is Romans 4, 12, 2. says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want to know what the will of God for your life is? Get into the word. It is quite clear that God has a plan for each and every Christian. But we got to get with God's plan. Until the time you became born again, you were on plan B. And now that you're in the kingdom of God, listen, guys, you can't carry the old ways into the new. Didn't he say there, all things have become new? How many of you know all means all? Amen. He added this, all of these scriptures and many, many more were inspired by God and penned by devout men. And they were sent here to help us grow up spiritually. They were sent here so that we could live and enjoy the kingdom of God right now. And then they were also sent that we could, uh, to prepare us to live with him throughout eternity. You agree with that? Say amen. amen. Let's all stand together. I need to ask you one question, and then we'll pray. Are you willing to stay on this journey with me? Are you willing to stick with it? Are you willing to help get your family to stick with it? Yes. I'm telling you, if you'll stick with this program, guys, and you'll get your mind right, you'll get your mind over on the Word of God, and you'll just do a little bit every day, 
You don't have to study half your day away. But listen, you can get a couple of scriptures that you can meditate on all day. Amen? Amen. You got to be willing to stay with the program. Get on God's program. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we never close out a service without letting everyone that's heard the word. See, the word brings life. Without the entrance of the word, a person can't even be saved. On every head bowed and every eye closed. If this word today has touched you in any way, I want you to know right now that you're standing before God Almighty because he's right there with you. It's you and you alone with him. It's mano a mano, one on one. Well, you may be standing next to your husband, you may be standing next to your wife, but it's your decision that God is looking at. So if you're in this place this morning, you're watching my live stream this morning, and you want to make a decision to rededicate your whole life to God and get your whole life in line with his word. If that's you, I want you to just raise a hand real quick and put them right back down. Praise God. Hands went up all over this building. I know my hand went up in the spirit. I know a lot of hands went up by live stream. And that's okay, guys, because we're not perfect. We're still a work in progress. Amen? I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your son to give me life and give it to me more abundantly. I believe that Jesus is your only begotten son, that he died on the cross so that I could live with you, that I could have victory in this life and in the life to come. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. I declare today that you are my Lord and my Savior, and I give you all the praise. Show me in your word what you want me to do, and I'll do it. In your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Uh, while I was teaching and I read one scripture, I'll just let you give you a little heads up. <clears throat> Study out Romans 12, 1 and 2, because the Lord said we're going to talk about renewing our mind to the word of God when, I, when we come back off of vacation. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Last thing we're all gonna always say on, uh, in our services is what? We serve a miracle working God and you are always in line for your miracle. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.